Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian and on the last video I did, I did some initials and several people responded said it was more of a monogram style, which I'll agree with. I have no idea. I just knew I've seen these things done. And so as you can see, the initials are MBR, which is first, middle, last. So one thing you saw me doing on there when I was cutting all this out, you saw me get my jigsaw and I'm going through here and cutting and I told you they were tabs. Well, I've had several people ask me about the tabs because they weren't sure what I was talking about. So what I kind of figured I'd do tonight was explain them a little better and kind of show you how they work. So the tabs just leave a little chunk of wood in between the piece that's staying and the section of wood that is leaving. And so it leaves it tied up. The reason that you leave that little tab in there is so as it's cutting, this little piece that was right here in this hole just doesn't come zinging out or it doesn't get turned sideways and not come out all the way and hit the bit and maybe make it stutter, make it just bump it where it sends the whole thing off course. And honestly, in the end, it's really a safety issue because if you get a small enough piece and it really zings that dude, I mean, it could pop you. I haven't been hit by one yet, but I've seen them come flying out. And now there are ones that you wouldn't have to do stuff like this or maybe that, those little holes, because honestly, the bit's going to eat up most of the wood and anything that comes out is going to be very, very small anyway. And it's not really any danger. It's the bigger chunks that you're looking at holding with this little tab process. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to run over to the CNC lab and I've just done a couple little designs so I can show you it with and without to kind of show you what happens. So let's go. So what you saw me doing there, that's the zeroing process. That's where I determine where the center of the piece of material is and where the surface is at so the tip will know where to start and not go in too deep or too shallow. So what, first off, we're going to cut a circle and we're going to do it with tabs. I programmed them in on this one. And what you need to pay attention to, I'm going to leave it running at normal speed. This will take like at most two minutes to cut it. And it'll go around and whenever it gets to one of the tabs, it'll lift up move and go down and it'll do that almost every time and then it'll leave tabs around the circle. speed is so you can actually see it lift up go over and go back down because whenever I'm doing it and I do it fast forward you don't ever notice those things because I usually do it about eight times the normal speed because most things I do take a little bit longer 
Okay, so now what I want to do is we're going to do one that I didn't put any tabs in and hopefully this thing doesn't zing out of there and whack my camera or whack me. So we're going to just see what it does. Climatic. <laughs> you know, every time I do that and I forget to put tabs in something, the piece does zing out or it turns in a whopper job. Probably what I should have done is some, done something more non-conventional than like a circle, because like when it gets up into these points and has to cut back on itself, that's when it usually pops it up. But as you can see, it just cut this one right out and it didn't move an inch. But I'm telling you, if it's a non-conventional shape. It will pop up, it'll turn it up sideways. It may go over here and set at the next place you're gonna cut. Now you're hitting two pieces and then it's gonna zing it out. It's more of a safety thing than anything to me. Well, I'm gonna say it's 50-50 a safety thing and it keeps you from messing up your project. So I'm gonna pull in here so you can see the little tabs. You can see that I've got four tabs in this, which is way overkill. You probably could get away with two on this. A lot of times I just put one. And to show you how small these tabs are, I've got a little box knife here. Hopefully I can do this without cutting myself. You can literally cut through those things with a knife. They're not very big. Now when I do it on bigger wood, like I did it on it, this is half inch, it leaves those things about a quarter inch thick. So you will have to use a saw to cut them. But like on quarter inch stuff, like a saw, I could just cut it out with a knife and you got two perfect holes. And I'm really disappointed that that just stayed where it was. Because <laughs> I was really expecting to go zinging and you'd be like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Now you're looking at me thinking, what is he talking about? <laughs> so now you see what I'm talking about, tabs. That's what they're for. They're to hold the little extra pieces, the waste in place. Because as you can imagine on something like this, with the four million dadgum pieces that I had to put in there to pull tabs, to keep them from zinging out and jumping over into the other one, they're very necessary. I mean, because at some point, one of these would have done what I was describing. It would have popped out, got in the way. I'd had to stop the machine and try to fish it out. And because you never want to put your old hand in the way <laughs> while that thing's going because it's moving at 16,000 RPMs. So guys, that's going to be about it for this one. I know that one wasn't a super sensational video, but I had several questions about tabs since I'd been talking about them. And so I thought, you know, it's just easier for me to explain it and show you how they're done and what I'm doing when I'm talking about tabs than just to leave you guessing. Uh, people who do CNC stuff all the time are going to understand this. People who don't or are not around it very much probably won't have any idea about it, but now maybe you will. So guys, that's going to be it for this one. If y'all haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.